so after description of uh, skull and vertebral column skull and vertebral column let us proceed the next part of the axial skeleton that is sternum sternum is present where the sternum is present it is, it is present on the ventral side midline of the thorax and the ventral side midline of the thorax and in the middle chest region under the skin under the skin it consists of it consists of three parts manubrium body and xiphoid process it consists of three parts namely manubrium body and xiphoid process it protects the internal organs present in the chest in the chest region and next it provides surface for the attachment of muscles which help in respiration we have done the respiration no there the muscles attach it to the sternum helps to increase the volume of the chest cavity thereby increasing the volume of the lung cavity so this is about the sternum flat bone on ventral side over the midline of the thorax in the middle chest cavity in the middle in the middle of the chest region under the skin and it consists of three parts namely manubrium body and xiphoid process and it protects the internal organs present in the chest it provides surface for the attachment of muscles which help in respiration next coming to ribs coming to ribs there are 12 pairs of ribs there are 12 pairs of ribs which form the lateral walls of the thoracic cage thoracic cage they are bicephalic they will be attached to the sternum on one side ventrally and to the thoracic vertebrae on dorsal side so they have two articular ends so they are called bicephalic they are called bicephalic ribs are of three types namely namely true ribs false ribs floating ribs because the true ribs are attached vertebral column on dorsal side and sternum over the ventral side so they are called vertebro sternal ribs vertebro sternal ribs first seven pairs are vertebro sternal ribs are true ribs they attach to the thoracic vertebrae and sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage and coming to the next type of ribs false ribs are called vertebro chondral ribs because the 8th 9th and 10th pairs of uh, uh, ribs do not connect to the articulate with the sternum directly but they join with the seventh pair they join with the seventh pair like this so with the cartilage so they are called vertebro that side they will be attached on the dorsal side they will be attached with the vertebrae but on the ventral side they do not articulate with the sternum directly instead they will attach to the seventh vertebra with the help of the cartilage that is why they are called vertebrochondral ribs and now coming to the last pair of two pairs of ribs they are called vertebral ribs only or floating ribs because the last pairs 11th and 12th pairs of ribs on one end they will be attached these ribs are attached to the vertebral column over the dorsal side but ventrally they are very free they are free and so they are called floating ribs and they protect the kidneys present over that region so this is the sternum and this is the vertebral column sternum towards ventral side vertebral column towards dorsal side and these are the pairs of ribs true ribs false ribs and floating ribs and now coming to the appendicular skeleton so with this we finished axial skeleton which consists of 80 bones which consists of 80 bones so coming to the appendicular appendicular skeleton consists of skeleton of limbs and skeleton of pectoral girdle and pelvic girdle they support and suspend the skeleton of limbs with vertebral column and next uh, the pectoral girdle supports the four limbs 
and the pelvic girdle supports the hind limbs coming to the pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle there it is present between four limbs and axial skeleton our hands will be connected with the axial skeleton with the help of the pectoral girdle it consists of two halves right and left halves it consists of triangular bone called scapula and another bone called clavicle each half consists of clavicle and scapula clavicle is elongated bone it is connected to the acromion process at one end and sternum at the other end this acromion process is nothing but the, the it is the process of the scapula scapula bone so clavicle will, will be attached to the acromion process of the scapula on one side and it will be attached to the sternum on the other side coming to the scapula it is generally it extends between second and seventh ribs it is a triangular it consists of triangular spine with acromion process that is very uh, useful for the attachment of the muscles that spine so this acromion process articulates with the clavicle as we have just discussed and it has a glenoid cavity into which the head of the humerus articulates and it forms a shoulder joint so in joints again we will be discussing about this it has a glenoid cavity to articulate with the forelimb that is the function of the pectoral girdle and also it is helpful for the attachment of the arm muscles and also it protects the internal organs whatever they are present in that region in that area coming to the pelvic girdle which is also called hip girdle pectoral girdle is also called shoulder girdle whereas pelvic girdle is called hip girdle it is present between hind limbs and the axial skeleton again it is four limbs and axial skeleton it is hind limbs and axial skeleton and it is attached to the sacrum it is attached to the sacrum plus coccyx it is attached to the sacrum plus sacrum which is the fused one uh, by the fused fused structure formed by the five sacral vertebrae and the coccyx which is formed by the coccygeal bones four coccygeal bones so uh, here uh, they it will be attached to the sacrum plus coccyx which forms pelvis which forms pelvis the two halves they fuse ventrally to form pubic symphysis to they fuse with the help of the fibrous cartilage to form the pu pubic symphysis and uh, it each half consists of uh, uh, three coccygeal bones but the three coccygeal bones fuse to form the single bone hip bone so what are the three coccygeal bones the upper ilium the inner ischium and uh, below pelvis there is pubis at where the pubic symphysis is formed so ilium ischium and pubis all these three bones will fuse to form the hip bone so where these three bones will meet there acetabulum is formed there acetabulum is formed here ilium ischium pubis at the place of the at the area of their fusion there will be a cavity called acetabulum to which the femur of the upper uh, hind limb um, bone of the upper hind limb that will be the head of the femur will fit into the acetabulum forming hip joint forming the hip joint so these two pelvic girdles join and they form the wide pelvis which protects the all abdominal viscera means internal organs which are present in the abdominal region this is the site for the attachment of the muscles this is the site for the attachment of the muscles so acetabulum articulates with the acetabulum articulates with the femur and it forms hip joint it gives strength to the strength to the sacral region and uh, let us discuss about the hind limbs tomorrow about the limb bones thanks for watching